Hello there girls and boys, welcome back to the Inner Sanctum, the place where I'll show you all of my tricks while I pull them off live right in front of you. And believe it or not, we are finally coming back to Harrison Mix Bus. And this is gonna be exciting because we're gonna be using, we're gonna be mixing a completely different track uh, from the usuals that I have showed you uh, whenever I am working on Mix Bus. Today we're gonna be working on an electronic music track that we developed together a few weeks ago in one of the Inner Sanctum uh, live streams. So before we continue, let me introduce you to this fine gentleman, which <laughs> happens to be quite excited about this. Aren't you, Tiago? Very. I can't even contain it. I can see, yeah. I can see the level of excitement. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, this is the story and Brave, and it gotta be said from time to time, beautiful Tiago Bergamini, which hasn't said hello to the girls in the world. Hello, girls and boys. How's it going? Is awesome. it, I'm glad to be back. It's good to have you here as well. Look at that, that somebody okay. is showing some manners. Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so, girls and boys, without further ado, let's get into it. So, here we go, girls and boys, right in front of you, what you got here is Mix Bus, Carson Mix Bus, and it's uh, quite different from the usual, right? Because this guy, it's, for those of you who are getting into this Harrison Mix Bus game, I totally recommend you to do it, because it's a fantastic uh, digital audio orchestration, which doesn't need you to get more plugins. <gasps> How <laughs> heretical is that? Crazy talk. It is crazy, but why is that? Well, it's because, as you can see here, girls and boys, Harrison Mix Bus is basically mimicking the workflow of a Harrison Mix Bus uh, mixer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the third to see, to be precise, which is a fantastic mixer that makes mixing desk that has been used in many uh, quintessential and seminal records, including Michael Jackson and David Bowie. Well, uh, how about that? Okay. So. Um, the reason why I like this guy is because it's an awesome way to mix music without plugins and we're going to be mixing everything without external plugins. Everything is going to be done using the channel strips of Harrison Mixbus that are comprised by the following. EQ, compression, and that's it. <laughs> of course, why? Because everything is going to be sent over here or somebody to our Mixbus. Which mix buses, to be precise, we got our drums being controlled by this mix bus, which is a reminder it has been a, a, a stereo um, summing bus, okay? Okay. We got our drums being sent here, kick and bass, more on that later, uh, guitars, self-explanatory keyboards and backing uh, vocals are sent here, and then we use the rest of our mix buses, which because we only got four, eight for external parallel mixing. So we got here, let me, yeah, I'm fighting with this guy. Jesus Morphe, got it. We got here a, a parallel compression for our nasty uh, purposes. It's gonna be super slammed and also distorted. Then we got our drum, uh, uh, stereo bus drum parallel compressor, our compressor, uh, parallel compression for our snare and a vocal compressor, okay. Okay, cool stuff. It is cool. And oh, 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 and as you can see here, we got an extra layer of uh, uh, um, um, applications, not applications, an extra layer of not plugins. But I'm gonna try to use. I'm gonna use that term for just for conversation's sake. Okay. Yeah. The mix buses comes loaded with an extra an extra layer of equalization here, a saturation area, and again a compression circuit. So you can see why we I like this guy. It's super awesome. And everything is going to be sent to this summing stereo master bus, which it comes loaded with an EQ, which is going to be our master EQ, a saturation, and a master compressor. Okay, cool. fun. So we've been talking for way too long, so let me uh, play some music. But before we do that, let me show you this. This is the arrangement window, which you might be more familiar with, and it's kind of similar to everything you have seen under the sun when it comes to. Um, what's the name? Uh, digital light workstations. That I'm not gonna be using this area over here. We're gonna be working on the mixer. Why? Because we're mixing. We're not writing music. Obviously, right? So, as a final note, here we got our usual trusty and friendly uh, uh, amigo yeah. uh, uh, adapter matrix AB. Move it to the left, please. Uh, to the left. Good. Yes. Uh, and you. this guy is, you know what it is. This is what we're going to use to make a reference. Okay. And that's it. So we're going to play back and I'm going to uh, let you get familiar with the track. Here we go. And when it is 
uh, orange, it stands for the rough mix, which we, I already loaded here. When it's blue, it's the mix that we're working on. So let's give it a listen first. From the top. Okay, girls and boys, uh, first and foremost, let me say uh, hello to everybody who's watching. I, go, I got uh, uh, the... Tiago uh, told me that there is somebody uh, leaving a comment and saying hello to you, Tona. Thank you for joining. Now, while we were playing the track, uh, we were uh, discussing and Tiago gave a proper... Uh, a, so, so a, clever, a clever comment. Okay, so to quote myself... Yes. <laughs> It sounds kind of mixed already. <laughs> it does sound kind of mixed, but that's testament of actually following proper uh, production, uh, music, music production techniques and guidelines, girls and boys. When the development of this track happened, uh, the, 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 the sound design for the bass and the synthesizer was already uh, done with the with the sound of the rest of the instruments in mind. That's why mm. they kind of feel together. Okay. But we're gonna do it correctly, okay? So let's hit it. We're gonna come back to uh, adapter metric AB and I'm gonna turn it blue. That means that we're gonna be working now and listening to the playback of the mix itself, okay? So here we go, I'm gonna close the plugin. First, you will notice that every single one of my faders is down. Why? Because you should always begin your mixes like this. That way you start to find the game stage correctly. Otherwise, if you have everything set to Unity, your role is going to be lowering the stuff down rather than actually finding the spots for the the, the, the edge of the instrument instruments, okay? So first, we're going to head towards this area and we're going to click on it, BAM! That means that our group is now not active, okay? And that will allow me to, to, to bring everything up one by one, okay? Mm. Over here, this is actually our transport bar. If I click on any of the different positions, you'll see that actually I am moving the, the, the position of the playhead, you can see here. I'm going to press play and see what happens. But, of course, since we have everything all the way down, I'm going to use the reference track, okay? Here we go. Okay, self-explanatory. So basically, there you get your markers. Yes. This is not, not necessarily markers, because I, I, I don't, I'm not going to work with markers right now, uh, but I can move my playhead uh, anywhere where okay. I want, because I got here a starting point and an ending point, so now I know where does the track begins and, and, and ends, okay? Okay. Okay, so let's mix stuff up. So I'm going to start to bring uh, instruments one by one, beginning with my kick and my bass. Here we go.
play it back again so I can uh, deal with the rest of the instruments. starting point. First, let's address some of the issues that we got with the kick already, which even though we mentioned that the track is already sounding quite, quite uh, kind of mixed, uh, there's still plenty of room for improvement. The first thing that I'm going to tackle is uh, the low end, as usual, because that's the foundation of the track. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to turn on the EQ and uh, the filter as well. And also I want you to pay attention to this, we got four bands. But they're extremely powerful, super, super far powerful. Over here we got the highs, over here we got uh, uh, mid highs, low, high, low mids, and lows. Okay, and let me yes, I think I, I usually get this this incorrectly. Uh, this is the gain, this guy, and this is the frequency. Okay, so let's give it a spin. I'm gonna first uh, address some of the uh, rumble that it's created by the low end. Okay, so I'm gonna bring both bass and uh, kick in. So here we go. There it is. Let me ask you. Uh, yes. What's the shape of the EQing and do you have control over it? No, that's a good question. Look, you got here uh, set uh, uh, parameters when it comes to the shape of the, 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 of the equalizer. Mm -hmm. uh, you got shelvings on the highs and the lows, the traditional ones. Yeah. You can turn them into, into picking. Okay. Okay. Shelving, it's from the set frequency that I selected all the way back. And pick, it's you can pick and select the, the frequency that you want to attack and, and address. The Q, it's set already, okay. so you, you cannot control that one. This is not an SSL console. And even if you, if we, if even the Trident uh, equalizers that I got here on the rack, they have the same, the same, the same uh, topography. Mm -hmm. Why is that the case? When you, back in the day when you, bought, when you were in the market for a mixing desk, uh, you will find uh, several different options. And all of those had a particular sound to them. For example, there were people who were more into neat consoles. There were others who were more into SSL consoles, Harrison, so on and so forth. Why? Mm -hmm. The EQ is different on each other, in yeah. each of them. It, every single one of those mixers has a different uh, approach to EQing. And that means that the sound that you will get out of it will be different. Yeah. And also, uh, the approach of to, of your, of, of, to your mixing uh, will be completely different. Okay. So it's part of the charm. Yeah, now, so in the end you kind of uh, become attached to that particular set of circumstances and you can mm -hmm. learn how to work with them yes. and that's it. Yeah. For example, SSL is known to be, it's, it's called, the EQ of the SSL consoles is usually referred to as being clinical or surgical. Okay. Because it, allow, it has plenty of control. More control than this. For example, on an SSL console you can control the, the Q mm -hmm. of, the, of the low mid and high mids. Yeah. So it's a completely different beast. So you can get the, 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 the gist of it. Yeah, yeah. So good question. Now, I already have only cleaned and removed some of the mud 
on my low end by applying the filters on both low, low on the kick and the, and the bass. From here, I'm gonna go towards my uh, master fader, okay, girls and boys. And from here, we're gonna start to mess around with the EQ and the drive and the limiter, which it's it's set to on. I like it. I always work with the limiter inserted on my mix bus on my master bus, either here or Log or Logic. And we're gonna start to work around with our compression settings and EQs. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna press play, and I'm gonna let this the entire to the track to kick in. Some boys, I did many things. Let me explain. We got here an EQ over here, and I I went to town with my highs. I increased them dramatically. The same could be said about my lows, because that's where I'm gonna get, be getting most of the low end energy out of the stereo bus. Why? That way I will skip uh, and save on equalization on the rest of the instruments. Okay, then. I went to town as well on the drive uh, setup, the tape saturation, which is a beautiful uh, and crispy sound. I liked it a lot. And from there, we mess around with the compressor. And again, one of the benefits of working with something like this is that they, the, uh, and a mixer, it's that uh, you don't have that many options. Mm -hmm. You're forced to work with your ears and, mm, and not to mess around with plugins, okay? And parameters and stuff. So what I did, I didn't even mess around with the ratio on my compressor. I just worked with the threshold until I found a point on which I was getting uh, a little bit of, a little bit more of uh, a little bit more energy without getting the pumping. Okay? okay. I am barely touching the 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 signal. Okay. I'm just controlling it a, a tiny bit. Yeah. One thing, this compressor is not like uh, the usual compressor that I use on my on my stereo mixes, uh, which has a, a, a low pass filter mm -hmm. side chain. In here, everything is triggering the compression, which is a sound. So I have to work with it within the boundaries of this. That's okay. why I didn't go that hard on the threshold. Make sense? Hopefully, yep. it does. It does. Now, now we've got this. We're gonna start to mess around with the rest of the instruments. We already got an issue with the kick. It has plenty of mud on the low end. Let me solo the kick and let's begin. There it is. Hmm. Which frequency it is? I don't know. Don't care. <laughs> Let's uh, start to address it. But you know what, girls and boys? I am dealing with the uh, uh, low end. I'm gonna use then my uh, field, my um, low mids for this. There it is. So I'm gonna lower that frequency because it's getting a little bit of mm, okay? Here we go.
Could you tell the difference? Yeah, yeah, it feels tighter and it feels cleaner, especially. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna bring the bass and the bass. see how it first. I increased a little bit of the low end on my on my kick to give it a little bit of mm. because the first thing that we did was cleaning it up, removing some of the stuff that wasn't needed from by using the filter. Then I looked for the frequency that was uh, adding the nasalness uh, to the sound of the kick, and then I made it bolsier, much more uh, deeper ended and clean and and punchier. From here, I'm gonna make it clicker. Because we need a little bit a click here. I, we need a little bit more of attack. So here we go. We're only working with the, the mid highs and the highs. Here we go. I'm gonna solo the kick so you can see the difference. Right now it's off, okay? And I'm gonna let it run for a few bars yeah. and then I'm gonna bring in the equalizer. Here we go. Okay, Theo, tell, tell yeah. me the difference. Okay, to me it feels a lot more controlled, first of all. Um, it feels um, tighter because of that. Yes. You get a cleaner kick. So uh, even though the the, the the without the EQ it feels a little bit more uh, uh, powerful is not the word word. It feels a little bit bigger, but in a way that's out of control. In a way that's not uh, focused. Yes. The the the, 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 the EQ version feels super focused and it actually moves you better. Yeah, exactly yeah. moves you. And also it got that um, how can I put it. A, a definition and mm. refinement. Yeah. It sounds like a record, don't, don't you think? Yeah. Okay, now let's see, let's address the bass because the bass is already giving me issues as well. I'm gonna keep the kick and the bass uh, engaged. Here we go. The same is going on. I'm gonna find the, the, the horrible frequency that it's annoying the living stuff out of me on the bass. I'm gonna remove the kick. That guy is annoying, and it's the usual 200 and something hertz. <laughs> way cleaner. Yeah, way cleaner, right? Yeah, yeah. And look at what I did, girls and boys. Just found the frequency and removed a little bit of uh, the mud. Which frequency it is? Have no idea, girls and boys. That's it. that's part of the charm of working with uh, with with analog gear. Uh, well, because this is mimicking the workflow of, an of analog gear, you are forced to use your ears because there is no need for you to know which frequency. You after after a few a few years of practice, you will be, this becomes a uh, kind of a habit. You do it just by knowing where to put the fa the, the knobs or the faders. You are kind of already. Uh, Expe uh, familiar with what to do and I always encourage you to use your ears uh, for that very reason and Harrison Mixbus is a great way to force you to do it in that way well, I'm gonna address a little bit more the, key, the, the, the bass and then I'm gonna start to make comparisons with the rough mix okay here we go Okay, Theo, 
Let's try what happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually, um, the sound became tighter, like on the spot. Yeah. Yeah, it just felt um, because when you have the, the the kick and the bass working in tandem, you have the, the actually the low end is what gets you moving. Mm -hmm. That is what gets you moving. Yes. And suddenly it felt right. Yeah, and it felt right. Mm, it yeah. felt right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So what I did, Russian boys, <laughs> I just first remove an extra layer of, of um, frequencies masquerading the definition of my bass by attacking the mid highs. Okay. Then I remove this frequency, which again I don't even know and I don't care which frequency it is because I, for as long as it works, that's what matters. Then I hit. Uh, the, the lows and enhanced the low end of that bass finding the sweet spot between the on which the relationship between the bass and the kick mm, the perfect marriage okay beautiful from here we're gonna bring back the rest of the mix and we're gonna start to mess around with the stereo boss over here our master our mix bus uh, uh, all about the kick and the bass because as I said before uh, this was about to come later and in here we actually have the sense let me show you the sense and here you can see, girls and boys, that everything uh, in here is being sent to a particular mix bus. Drums, it's the one that I use to control uh, everything that is not the kick. And still, I have the option to send some of the information to the kick because that's I, I'm going to use it to control the dynamism of the entirety of the of the uh, uh, bass, uh, not bass, uh, drums. Then we got the kick and bass. And actually, what you've been hearing the whole time. It's the kick and bass uh, mix bus over here, okay? So I'm going to start to apply some distortion to the kick and the bass, but with the rest of the mix as part of the sound. Here we go. What happened? Super clicky. We started to get more attack and more aggressiveness out of our kick and our bass just by applying distortion, girls and boys. Awesome. And here I'm gonna work now with my EQ. I'm gonna make the low end even more powerful. Here we go. The, or applying distortion overdrive through our sound of kick and the bass together now I am messing around with my EQ right now it's off because I want you I want to make a comparison right now we got an enhanced low end which according to what the plugin says or well, the plugin the, the, the digital workstation says it's attacking 300 Hertz makes sense then we I remove some of the meats just to make it much more tighter and applied a copious amount of high end which is 2000 hertz uh, to increase the attack of the kick okay mm -hmm. so right now it's off i'm gonna solo it and then i'm gonna uh, bring it in bring it in here we go Can you describe the sound? Oh, it just feels more, feels more, more punchy and focused. Focused, right? Yeah. I think that I went a little bit overboard with the lows. I'm gonna, rem I'm gonna back it off a tiny bit, just a tiny bit. There it is perfect. From here, let's address the rest of the drums. Here we go. I'm gonna press play. Okay, we already got some issues with the snare, well, the claps, which I'm going to change the name. 
this is collapse. Oosh. There is collapse. And also I think that this room microphone, this room is... Uh, let me say, room, 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 room. This is my crash. I'm gonna do it over here. Crash. There it is. Good. Now let's see. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my EQ, which is the the the, the control that I'm gonna be dealing with uh, with my drums, drums, and I'm gonna mm, apply some compression first. Here we go. I'm gonna set my starting point to be here. solo the claps because let's see if we can make it uh, much cleaner just by uh, just for good practice I'm gonna apply a low-end cut could you hear the difference oh, I'm gonna remove it a bit, yeah. and then I'm gonna bring it back there is an actual great difference already Could you tell the difference? Yeah, yeah. There's a, the, there was a little bit of, of low energy build up. I found only a little bit. Yeah, but it was subtle, but yeah. But it was enough to uh, start to mess around with the rest. Why? Because as uh, sp the, the claps themselves, they are not supposed to add any form of benefit uh, or, or enhance the sound of the mix by, uh, by bringing some low end. So it was just useless information that was cluttering the stereo mix. That's mm -hmm. why it's important to remove uh, low end whenever you find yourself uh, facing something like this. This is just adding mud, okay? Mud, 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 mud for the for the picks. So I'm gonna then uh, make it a little bit more uh, attacky. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Okay, let's see with the rest of the mix. if we add a little bit more air to the sound of the clap mm. I'm gonna work with the highs and I'm gonna keep it as it is or some I'm, I'm, I'm gonna work it work with it as uh, shelving here we go Yeah. Let me solo girls and boys and you'll see the difference. Right now is without the EQ. Awesome, right? Yeah, the difference is quite big because it, it was kind of a uh, faded yes. before without spark. Exactly. Now you added some 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 shine to it. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of spark, it's time to hit the uh, drums bus. Because I'm gonna apply distortion to the sound of our snare, uh, of, our cla of our claps. Here we go. Ready. <laughs> <laughs> and look, there's some boys. Distortion is a beautiful thing because it's not only adding uh, the harmonic content to your sound, but also. Uh, by its nature, it's already kind of compressing your signal a tiny bit, which makes it even more um, ballsier sounding mm -hmm. and controlled. Awesome. Now, let's start to make fun of our rough mix, okay? <laughs> so I'm gonna bring back adapter made to KV, 
and the usual resemblance. Blue stands for uh, what we're working on. Orange stands for the rough mix. But before we do that, let's comp make sure that we got a proper uh, volume uh, match. So I'm going to remove the plugin right now so I can uh, begin from the top. Here we go, girls and boys. And on, you, yeah. on the low end, you can feel the difference on the spike right away. Yes. Well, as, as soon as you press the button for the for the the reference, you can feel the the mix getting cluttered, getting kind of a dirty, not dirty sounding, but less uh, defined. Yeah, way less defined. So you get a when you put it back on the on the blue uh, blue balls kind the of thing. Ball, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you get a super clear, well defined sound and carrying a lot of punch. Yes, exactly, because we're adding weight. To the sound and since this is an electronic music track or some voice it's important to make sure that we got a proper low wind and a bouncy sounding kick because that's what keeps the girls dancing if you don't manage to do that well you're failing <laughs> quite miserably okay now that we got a, 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 good, a good starting point or some voice and now that we have confirmed that we're actually doing something beneficial to the track let's continue okay it's time to hit uh, some of the of my synthesizers because I feel like my path it's kind of uh, adding more mod to the pigs uh, for the pigs than it should. Let's find a spot on which the synthesizer kicks in the pad in particular. So we're gonna we're gonna be using this mark. Okay, from there. No, I, that's actually not the pad. There is a pad. Good. Here we go, some boys. I'm gonna solo the sound of my pad. Just removing the the mud that would be getting in the way of the of the kick. From here, I'm gonna bring back the rest of the mix, and I'm gonna work on the pad in the context of the mix. First thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna remove some of the mud uh, that is part of the sound of the pad, and we're gonna find that frequency that is masquerading many of the things. Uh, and that's gonna be uh, it's not masquerading anything; it's just making the sound of the pad to feel less defined. Okay, mm. so we're gonna get rid of the nose. Which is what I what it's usually referred to as the huh, okay or the French okay <laughs> here we go. There it is. Let's uh, let's let our ears to uh, forget. Done. Here we go. And obvious person, boys, because of the way that I recorded those uh, those uh, pads, uh, there is kind of a, fi a filter effect that happens, uh, which is actually a modulation effect that I did by working with the Juno. I actually recorded all of the synthesizers using the Alpha Juno too behind me. Fantastic, beautiful synthesizer, and uh, it works. The thing is that when when uh, mixed with the rest of the instruments, we were getting this honk, honk honky sound, okay, mm -hmm. which happens not uh, every single time that the pad is playing. Why? The modulation applied to the filter frequency uh, allow it to cut through it uh, and allows uh, to 
keep that uh, frequency out of the equation a good chunk of time. That every time that the sweep uh, opens up a little bit more, you can hear it. Yeah. So play, pay, please pay way too much attention to it. I'm gonna bring it back again. I'm gonna remove. I'm gonna play back, but I'm gonna remove the EQ and then I'm gonna bring it back. Okay. So please pay attention. And what you're looking for is a. Okay. So. Yeah, just Beautiful. remember my, just, remind, <laughs> just, just, just keep the image of me doing the whole, uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, 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 it's subtle. Like, to be honest, I don't think I would uh, identify it by myself. Yes. But with you pointing it out, I can feel the difference. It feels when you remove those frequencies, it does feel a little bit cleaner and actually gives the the pad a little bit more shine because yes. you're getting some of the 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 sound that shouldn't be there and allowing the rest to actually flowers. be a little bit more yeah, more yeah. present. Blossom like the flowers. Uh, the, the, yeah. You know. Not the word that we use, but okay. Where am? Where am? Where am? Okay. <laughs> Now, speaking of shine, let's uh, let's uh, add a little bit more of high end to our path. Don't know if I'm gonna work with my mid highs or my highs. So I think I'm gonna work with the highs because the shelving. Okay, here we go. I love it, but I don't want more of it. Let me explain. What it's doing, it's adding definition and a little bit of air to the sound of the path. The thing is that once the filter frequency sweeps to the highest points of the synthesizer mm. and the resonance kicks in harder, we are enhancing the sound of the resonance. Okay. Which, it's a good or bad thing. In this case, it's not working because it's making a, a gigantic bumping volume for the synthesizer only in a particular frequency. How to deal with it? Introducing compression. <laughs> We're gonna engage the living stuff out of the compressor and I'm gonna use my uh, solo. In here, I don't know if I'm gonna use the leveler or the compressor. I think I'm gonna use the compressor setting, okay? Why? You can see that you, it changes. When it is leveler, you have access to the attack. When it is compressor, you have access to the ratio. When it is limiter, I, when it's just the release. Ah. Okay. Why is that? To keep it simple. Mm. Right now, I'm gonna deal with the compressor because it, it's gonna work with a set uh, attack and release, and I'm gonna deal with the ratio. How much I want to compress of the signal of the resonance. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay, I think it works. Let's see with the rest. No, it's not ready yet. I'm gonna compress it even further. No, wait, wait a second. I like where it, what it's doing, but I'm gonna increase the ratio. Again. Cool. It worked. It worked. But I find something offensive on the pad again. I'm gonna solo it and let's play it back. I'm gonna work on this with this band, so pay close attention. Here we go. That 
bad guy. Awful. I'm gonna lower already a little bit of, uh, of the frequencies. I think the difference is quite obvious, but I'm going to solo the synthesizer and I'm going to bring in and out the equalizer. I want you to pay attention to how the honkiness is gone, mm. on how the, the nasalness of certain points are, is completely out of the equation and how bright and yet defined the synthesizer becomes when I engage the EQ. First, without. Can you define? The way that it felt to me uh, was speci especially because since the, the, the um, of the, the LFO that you use, you, the, the sound's moving quite a lot. Yes. Whenever it goes higher, it goes in, yeah. you in actually the... feel a lot the difference. That's yes. where, where when I felt it the most. Yes. Because uh, it felt a lot cleaner and a little bit more pointy, but in a good way, in a way that yes. it was actually cutting through better and clearer. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And as Diego mentioned, uh, we were actually attacking most of the uh, action that happens when the filter opens up. Mm -hmm. Because for obvious reasons, when the filter opens up, more frequencies are going to pass through. And some of them will be beneficial, some of it will be uh, detrimental. And by applying equalization, we actually clean them up. The compressor was quite important as well because we controlled the mm. stupidly high peak without removing it completely, the resonance, okay? Now, let me see how much time we have left. Okay, we are basically reaching the end. So let's uh, make a final assessment and comparison with the original, okay? Here we go. I'm going to go from the top. And let's make fun of our rough mix. Here we go, girls and boys, and again, I will have to be uh, making sure that we match in volume. Here we go.
Okay, Thiago, final comments. All right. Actually, this for me is a great showcase and testament to how important it is to have a proper reference point. Mm. Because we actually mentioned when we first started with the mix that the, 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 the raw, the rough, actually sounded quasi mixed. Yes. But now putting, putting them back to back, you see just how much clearer the sound became and how much better defined it is now. Yes. So actually you got rid of quite a lot of, of, of dirt, yes. of mud. Yes. And at first I didn't even realize that it was there. No, I, it <laughs> but was now a putting, blanket. putting it back to back, you can see now the difference is quite, quite big. Dramatic. <laughs> and girls and boys, do I have to remind you that we only worked on our kick bass and the synthesizer path. <laughs> <laughs> also, we worked, uh, we established the sound of our uh, stereo bus. Also, what do you think about my, uh, Mix Bus? The, the, the platform? Yes. I find it quite interesting the way that, that it mimics, uh, of course, it's a digital recreation of something that's supposed to be analog. Yes. But it, uh, I think that the constraints that it creates actually makes it, as you put it yourself, and I think that that's an in interesting factor of it, uh, to be a, little, a lot more um, focused on, on sound, yes. on, on sound results, yes. actually, rather than thinking of, okay, what kind of plugins could I bring in or what parameters, so, okay, no, you, you have what you have there right in front of you, and you know what kind of results you, you want to get, and you have those set uh, limited circumstances to operate within to reach those results. And I actually think when it comes to developing the chops, you might actually be better, and from point of view, we can make a comment on that uh, afterwards as well. I think it might be actually better to develop the chops in a context su such as that, rather than in a context such as Logic with access to infinite plugins. Yes, I think the same way as you do. Because uh, that's how the, the, the legends, the, my heroes, as I like to call them, mixing heroes, they learn how to learn the craft mm -hmm. by working with limited op li a limited set of options. Why does that make it better for, for someone who, who is working on this? Because it forces you to work with your ears and to be clever, to be intelligent. It forces you to actually learn how the, the gear that you have access to works mm -hmm. because one of the many things that happens to every single one of us when when we are uh, getting into this mixing game is that uh, when we think that we uh, when we're doing something wrong we think automatically that it's because the plugin the plugin that we're using is not the correct one to use in this sound mm. when in reality it's because you don't even know what you're doing you're just twisting knobs expecting something to come out of it and again we're not using plugins yet, and I don't think that we're going to use... I'm not, I'm not going to use any other plugin other than reverb and delay, as I stated before. And uh, also, I just remember that you can actually download this very template for free. I'm going to make sure that we add the download link to the description of this video. Mm -hmm. Because everything that I'm doing here, you can uh, recreate and replicate by your own uh, using this very template, which I got to tell you. Every time that I open it up, I am quite happy uh, with the results that I get because it's a ridiculously powerful template and simple to use. I actually have a video explaining how the, how this template works. So we're going to link that as well as a, as a comment, okay? Okay. So, uh, without further ado, girls and boys, uh, I would like to say thank you for joining us. And I hope that you got something out of this. And I promise you that I'm going to come back to Harrison Mix Boss more often. It's an awesome platform. And what happened is that, well... Behind the scenes, we've been working on plenty, many, many things yeah, man. uh, that has been uh, getting in the way of uh, some of the usual uh, 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 kind of content that the, this channel has been built upon. So we're going to come back to it quite, quite soon. And we're going to actually finally address the final uh, situations that have been part of this operation for the last few weeks, which have been uh, hindering some of what we're doing. But it's finally under our control. So. Stay tuned because we're gonna keep the rest of the content flowing as even better than before. So, girls and boys, uh, once again, thank you for joining. And if you got any question, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you like to support this channel, the best way to do it is by listening to music on Apple Music or Spotify, and also by following us on social media such as Instagram, which is the best way for you to get in touch with us in a much more personal basis. And if you are lucky, you might be able to even see the dogs. So. <laughs> Uh, without further ado, girls and boys, as every single time that I meet you, I gotta remind you something. Never, ever, ever let anybody tell you what to dream about. And remember that we will see you when we see you.